So let's state the correspondence theorem. Correspondence theorem, um, which is going to say, well, okay, so the correspondence theorem is about when we have uh, a morphism phi from g to g prime, um, right, so this is a group morphism. Uh, and let's let uh, let k be uh, the kernel of phi. So what the correspondence theorem says is the following. There is a bijective correspondence. And that correspondence is between subgroups of G that contain K and subgroups of G prime just plain old subgroups of G prime. And moreover, um, we can, so we can, we can say exactly what this, uh, what the, what the things that are going to correspond is. So H, if H is a subgroup of G that contains K, H will map to phi of H, this being the set of elements you know, uh, x in g prime, such that x equals v of h for h in h. Um, and then, you know, something that's over here, um, well, okay, what, what's a good name for a subgroup of g prime? Maybe h prime. That is going to go to the inverse image set, phi inverse of h, um, which will be uh, again. Now this isn't this isn't this isn't an inverse function. Say for example, if this is not a bijection, phi inverse won't be a function. So, but we can apply phi inverse, just the inverse image, to any set. And you know that'll give us all of the you know pre-images of elements in H. Um, and what the correspondence theorem says is that this will be a a subgroup of G, and it will contain K. So a way I like to visualize the correspondence theorem is by writing this a sort of Venn diagrammy type of thing. Maybe it's not quite a Venn diagram, but so so the the picture looks like this. So we have a group G, right, which is a set of elements, and a group G prime, which is a possibly smaller set of elements because this is a surjective map. Um, and then you know we're going to have the identity element in G prime, and over here we're going to have some subgroup. Um, which is kernel phi, that's k. And so this is there's a map between these sets, and that's phi. The kernel um, will map the kernel will map to the identity by definition of kernel. Um, and you know if this is an isomorphism, then the kernel will be trivial. But if it's not, then there will be a non-trivial kernel. And so what the correspondence theorem is saying is that if I have, you know, some bigger subgroup, um, then and that subgroup contains the kernel, then, you know, there's a corresponding subgroup in here. 
and you know the elements in this subgroup will map to the ones in this one. So this picture isn't necessarily a precise picture, uh, but it's one that I like to think about uh, when I think about the correspondence theorem. So how does the proof of the correspondence theorem go? Well, it turns out this is uh, this proof. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to verify, um, but each one of them is sort of well. It's an application of the the techniques that we've been we, that that we've we've seen in previous videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down. Um, into parts, um, there'll be there'll be five things that we need to verify, and then each of those parts will be an exercise to you. So here are the things that we need to verify. Um, so first of all, is that phi of h is a subgroup. Of g prime. So your challenge to proving that this is a subgroup, you'll have to verify that, you know, associativity, um, well, you won't have to verify associativity because g prime is associative, but you'll have to verify identity, inverses, and closure. Um, and the second thing you'll have to do is verify that phi inverse of h, um, is a subgroup of G which contains which contains K. Um, again, you'll you'll be verifying identity inverses and closure. And both of these the hint is, you know, you're going to have to use the fact that, you know, phi is a morphism, right? You're going to have to use the morphism property. Um, but be careful because phi inverse isn't a morphism because it's not even a function necessarily. Um, so you'll have to reframe the problem. You'll have to reframe the second bullet point in terms of phi, not in terms of phi inverse, if you want to use the morphism property. Okay, now we've got to verify that we'll have to verify that. So um, if H, whoops, if H is a normal subgroup of G, oops, H is normal. subgroup if and only if v of h is normal in g prime um, and so that's going to correspond to the fact that in our correspondence here you know normal subgroups will correspond to normal subgroups um, so if it's a normal subgroup on one side, it'll be a normal subgroup on the other side. And then you want to show bijectivity. I guess, okay, I guess the hint for the third one is also that uh, phi is a morphism. So this can be the hint for this one as well. Um, so we need to show bijectivity. And in particular, we'll show that uh, Phi of phi inverse of h equals h, or I guess h prime, and then phi inverse of phi of h uh, equals h. So the reason I put an h prime here is because I'm remembering the fact that this has got to be a subgroup of g prime. Um, so maybe I should I should put a, a prime there. 
as well. Um, just to just to keep keep straight which set the subgroup is a subset of. Um, and so the hint for this one um, is that for a lot of it, you don't need um, you don't actually need to know anything about groups. So this is this is true for surjective maps of sets. Um, and then you'll know that uh, one direction of this one, this direction, so phi inverse of phi of h uh, contains h. Um, that's true for maps of sets. Um, and so the only part that you'll need, to, so so you'll need to verify these parts just for sets, uh, if you want to, and then the 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 part where you'll need to know about groups will be uh, so you'll need the homomorphism property for um, or other facts about groups, possibly the axioms, maybe. Um, for so you need group theory, group, group theoretic info for by inverse by h equal um, is contained in h, and my hint will be. Um, well, you'll want to pick an element, and then once you've picked an element, uh, look at the proof of the first isomorphism theorem. The first isomorphism theorem has a similar idea to the proof of um, this part. And then, finally, the last thing to verify will be that the order of phi inverse of h prime equals the order of h prime times the order of k. And so that will correspond to the fact that in our correspondence here, the order of h will be equal to the order of, you know, 5 of h times the order of k. Um, and the uh, hint for this one is the counting formula. The counting formula um, should be used in the proof of this last part.